Sensory Neurography. The implementation of the sensory neurography is basically similar for all nerves that are available for this examination. Therefore, it is recommended that this examination be viewed by using the example of the median nerve. The techniques shown and described herein are essentially repeated in all other nerves, particularly when it comes to the basic application of the stimulation and recording electrodes and the method of distance measurement. The instrument settings for the sensory neurography should be selected as follows. Amplification, 8 microvolt per division. Time base, 2 milliseconds per division. Stimulus frequency, 1.3 Hz. Stimulus duration, 150 microseconds. The limiting frequencies at Neurowerk EMG have been stored in the setup settings and cannot be directly changed. Obviously, the device settings should be configured to suit the particular diagnostic requirements. Sensory neurography of the median nerve in orthodromic and antidromic technique. The median nerve runs through the middle of the forearm and innervates in its sensitive endings at the base of the thumb, the forefinger, the middle finger, as well as the medial side of the ring finger. The different or active electrode is positioned precisely above the nerve path at the wrist. The indifferent or reference electrode is approximately 3 cm proximally attached. The moistened ring electrodes are used as a stimulating electrode and placed on the forefinger. The cathode which in this case, the black minus electrode, is located proximally to it. Frequently, the degreasing of skin and the use of an abrasive skin cleaning paste is required to reduce high stimulus artifacts. The ground electrode is attached between stimulation and recording electrodes. It should be taken into account that the ground electrode is always moist and fastened tightly. Alternatively, a bar electrode can be used for recording. Also in this instance, the plus labeled indifferent or reference electrode is located proximally. The stimulation starts with low stimulation intensity and increases slowly, while the stimuli are triggered cyclically. If the recording electrode is placed in the right way, a sensory potential can be registered with a stimulation intensity starting from approximately 3 mA. If the set amplifier sensitivity is either too large or too small, it is recommended to adjust the sensitivity to ensure that the response potential occupies an appropriate place on the monitor. To obtain a clear response potential, the potential should be averaged 10 times by using the averager. Alternatively, the recording of the sensory nerve conduction velocity can be measured in an opposite manner to the natural stimulation conduction, which in this case means antitromically. The stimulation takes place proximally, while the recording takes place distally. The moistened recording electrodes are placed on the second finger. The stimulation electrode may be used with moistened felts or metal inserts that are moistened with a conductive adhesive paste. The stimulation place is marked and the distance to the recording cathode, which in this instance is black, is measured. In contrast to the orthodromic recording, the antidromic stimulation technique involves the stimulation of motor nerve fibers and a contraction of the muscle can arise, which causes a muscle artifact in the response signal. The amplitude of the response signal is higher than in the orthodromic technique. 
Here, for comparison purposes, an orthodromic and an antidromic recording is made in both the right side and the left side. The orthodromic recording on the right side with 2 microvolt and the antidromic recording on the right side with 8 microvolt and muscle artifact. Here an orthodromic and antidromic measurement is shown on the opposite side with clear muscle artifact. The distance between the stimulation and the recording cathodes is measured and recorded in the results table on the examination monitor. The nerve conduction velocity is automatically calculated by the device and this is based on the distance between the stimulation and the recording cathode. As an option, the surface temperature of the skin inside the examination area can be displayed by using a temperature sensor. It should be considered that, depending on temperature, the sensory nerve conduction velocity changes. Usually, the device exactly places the markers for latency and amplitude automatically. If, due to pathological conditions or standard variants, this does not occur, the marker should be corrected manually to reach precise data regarding nerve conduction velocities and amplitudes.